What's up, YouTube? How's everyone doing today? Doing good here, as usual. Thank you for asking. We have ourselves another El Movio El Revuio. And I do have my handy dandy trusty notes right here. And plenty of them. I'm not a professional. I don't claim to be a professional. I do this for fun. I'm not going to remember all this stuff. And that's just the way it is. You'll notice I'm letting my beautiful locks flow today. I don't have my hat on. I might as well show them off while I can. You know, I have alopecia, so you never know. I might be bald the next day. Google it. Alopecia. Alright, guys. Back on track. The name of the movie is... Silent Night, Bloody Night. Came out in 1972. I was born in 71. That movie's old. I'm not, but that movie's pretty old. So let's go over the cast of characters. Didn't put them all in here. Just main ones, like I always do. The cast is, and I may butcher the heck out of them, so deal with it. Patrick O'Neill as John Carter. James Patterson as Jeffrey Butler. Mary Warnov. Warnov. W-O-R-O-N-O-V. As Diane Adams. See, Diane Adams is an easy name to remember. That's easy to say. Why is her real name not? Astrid Huron, I suppose, as Ingrid. Even Ingrid's good. Now, I got a lot of stuff wrote down, and I'm going to be honest. Something about this movie I just couldn't follow. Um, so I used someone else's uh, write-up of the basic story, the plot synopsis of the, of the movie. Because I just, I don't know, I couldn't capture what was really going on, totally. So here we go, and I will give credit to the guy when I'm done here. Story is, Wilford Butler returns home on Christmas Eve, and his house has been turned into a mental institution for the criminally insane. But the day of his return, he is set on fire and dies. Isn't that a great homecoming? That is a, that is a really great homecoming. That is a, that, that, that's insane. It's good stuff. The townspeople believe it was an accident, and the institution house is closed down. Wilford leaves his house to his grandson, Jeffrey. A few years later, Jeffrey decides to sell the house, but the townspeople including the mayor, have mixed feelings on keeping people away from the house, especially when a serial killer escapes from another institution and finds refuge there. I think they have too many mentally insane crazy people in this area. I think that's the problem. The killer makes frightening phone calls and kills anyone coming near the house. Well, why not just go in there with like a SWAT team and kill him, and then the movie's over? Anywho. But, what does the killer have in common with what happened to Wilford Butler years before? I don't know. Literally, I don't know. And I apologize for that, dude. I don't know. This write-up was actually written by Blythe... 379 at cs.com so I give props to him for writing that up thank you I simply couldn't have done this any good honestly I got confused and needed someone else's words straight up straight up now tell me are you really gonna love me forever my thoughts my opinions let's do this here we go First thought is, was this movie shot with a freaking Etch-A-Sketch or what? Like seriously, 
uh, it's difficult to even try to watch. Um, I watched, I didn't watch some uh, illegal online anything. It was on Roku, on one of the channels I have on Roku, like Tubi or something like that. Literally, uh, there were moments where you just didn't know what was going on. It's like someone put Vaseline over the camera and then was doing this and it was in the dark and and I think that's what hurt me even keeping up with it and I wrote that this is the main reason I couldn't keep up with the story I was too busy just trying to see what was going on serious Lee that's what I just said <laughs> during the movie there is some explanation and backstory, which is great. You do get an overall creepy feeling, as the movie is very dark, in good ways and bad ways. The acting is okay, and would probably come across better if you could pay attention, instead of trying to look through the horrible camera quality. Seriously, it looks like Vaseline on the lens. And it was shot in some of the scenes. It, it For this movie coming out in, what was it, 1972, it really looks like it's from the 40s, 20s, probably 20s. Seriously. I don't get it. There's a twist and a subtle nods as such littered in the movie. As with most films, I thought the cinematography... Uh, was well done. I don't pick apart cinematography too much. The the overall, you know, the art of it and how things are done. Um, if something really stands out, then I'm like, you know, be it good or bad, then I might, then I'll take notice. But overall, a lot of times I notice that movies have pr uh, pretty good angles and pretty good uh, ways of shooting. Uh, I've never been this like, you know, unhappy with most movies. So. There you go. There is some POV moments as well. You know, point of view. Kind of from the person's eyes there. A uh, the musical score is twisted and keeps you on point. As it should. The story, the acting, the characters are probably better than they come across. Since, like I said, the whole time you're just trying to pay attention uh, and see through the horrible camera. Eh, that sucks. But again, the film quality just took it out of it. That it kind of takes you out of it a little bit. If you can get past its flaws, uh, give it a try. I might watch it again, actually, just to see if I can get around all that. Because now I know kind of more what happens and I don't have to sit there and really pay such close attention. I can kind of know what's going on. Uh, so, yeah. Hopefully I can follow along and get it better next time. I actually got another page here, but just a little. So because of the film quality, that alone is making me give the film a 2.5 out of 5. Literally looks like a movie from the 20s, and, and probably worse. And when it's said and done, you know, if you can't see what you're watching, how do you enjoy it? Um, so that's it. Uh, Silent Night, Bloody Night from 1972. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video. Um, I hope you subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate it if you already are a subscriber. Uh, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. Uh, I do all this for free. It's entertaining for me. It gives me something to do. And I like it. I get to talk into a camera. That's pretty cool. So. If. You don't mind. Subscribe. And tell all your friends about how wonderful. This channel is. Movie reviews. Bicycle riding. Bicycle maintenance video games what else is there I mean come on I got other things I went for a hike the other day big old long video on that um, do all kind of stuff 
and I hope to branch out even more. Oh, I've got some drawings that I'm doing that I've posted. Uh, check out the playlist. i got two little playlists there that you can look at for movie reviews and art, photography, stuff like that. Uh, no real photography up yet. But uh, anyway, enough rambling on. Enough. Guys, don't forget. You can get up, get out, get rad, and do it to it. Even while doing a movie review. We'll see you guys later. Go check out that movie. See ya.